You know, um, every special number that is being sung is just reminding me. Every special number that is being sung is just reminding me of how much I cannot sing. I thank you, Brother Jeff and Miss Tortal, for wonderful music selection. It was beautiful to it was beautiful to hear that. We praise the Lord for your talent, and may you continue to use it for your service. Choices. Choices, choices, choices. Choices, choices, choices. 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 Choices, choices, choices. Ah, you still have not mastered the last part. When I say choices, 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 you say, I choose life, life, life. You want to try it one more time? The last part. Choices, choices, choices. Bagal talaga. Next time na lang. We thank the Lord for bringing us back to worship Him this afternoon. Amen? I thank you for that song because it told us that He chose us first. And when I'm asking you choices and you respond life, you're not responding that you want to live your own life, but you're responding that you want to take the life of Jesus that he has given to you. Are you with me? And so this morning, I beg you once more time, please listen to the words that I'm going to speak. We are not dealing with any scientific topic. We are not dealing with any geography or social sciences. No, no, no. We are dealing about your eternal life. You know, in the world that we live in right now, it seems that it's so hard for Christians to live in. There is atheism and so many other isms that we don't even know what's the truth anymore. But I'm telling you, beloved, search the truth. Search for the truth and never stop at the week of prayer. Find your own time and make that decision. Today I'm going to call for a decision. I am going to call for an altar call. And so if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you today, if throughout the week you feel that you need to make a decision for Christ, either just to simply say, Lord, I want to choose life in you. To either say, I want to have a bit more Bible studies to understand about the choices that I could make, the choices that will lead me to eternal life. Either you want to say, Lord, I want to publicly declare my choice to everyone, AUP Academy and the whole world, that I want to be baptized choosing you. I will call for this appeal at the end. Please pray about it. Today, okay, we're going to look at Moses. Uh, <laughs> we're going to look at Moses, but rather, I will change this a bit. We're going to look at Israelites. Israelites. We have been looking at several topics. Now, I love doing this. You would forgive me if I keep on repeating information. But as I repeat information, those who I spoke to fast will understand this time. The more I repeat to you, you can be able to grasp the idea of what we are talking about. In the beginning, we have discussed what is choice. And what is choice? It is picking between two or more possibilities. I am so glad we have more than 100 people sitting here and each one of you has their individual choice to make. Nobody can make that choice for you. And you can also choose to sleep, which I can see many of you doing right now. So we can make our own choices. Our life is defined by the choices that we make. We looked at Adam and Eve. They were given a choice that they could either choose life by eating of every tree, including the tree of life, or they could choose death by eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It was in their choice to make this decision and they chose what? 
They chose death. They thought they were choosing life, but this is how Satan deceives us. Even in our misunderstanding, he deceives you. Why should you listen to this guy? We are here anyway for every week of prayer. Don't listen to this brother Moses, Yosef. You can just choose to sleep. That's what Satan does. But this we are dealing with is your life or death. They were told that they will not surely die, but we discovered that what happened, they did die. God told them, dust thou came out of, and dust thou shalt return. Satan's deception will always be the same. Satan's deception will always be presenting something to be better only for a while. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life, they don't last forever because the world passes away and the last thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abides forever. We discovered on the second session that friends shape or they make our destinies. We looked at, maybe can I ask somebody to move this screen a bit because I think, or oh, maybe it's, I don't know what's happening, but it, it basically says, blessed is the man, so it's not the screen, I think it's the presentation itself. Yeah. Uh, all right. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the mockers. We looked at the character of dinner. She desired to see the daughters of the land. She desired to dress like the world. She desired to go and see the parties, to have the kind of relationship that this world had. And what happened to her? And when Shechem, a prince, saw her, he took her, he laid with her, and defiled her. He offered her life in this worldly materials. But at the end of it, death resulted, that it came to the third day that Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, killed all the men in the house. And we concluded that her name means judged because she was judged out of her choice that she made. She chose death. I urged you to choose life which is in Jesus, the one who could give you water and it can overflow in your life. Jesus gives you life. What was your choice? Then this morning, we looked at unshakable faith. The fact that Jesus wants to have a relationship with you and not relationship with your father, not a relationship with your sister, but relationship with you personally. We looked at Jesus' admonition that if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up the cross, and follow me. And what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world but lose his soul? We looked at the life of Joseph. We looked at the way his faith was established in his father. The father used to tell him his stories. The father used to tell him how good God has been in his life. The father loved him. The father treated him as a prince. The father made the brothers to hate him. God's plan was revealed in his life, but yet Satan wanted to hinder this plan through the brother. In one hand, God wanted to give him life, a prosperous life, but the devil wanted to kill this life, and he was sold into slavery, left to die. But it said in Patriots and Prophet that on that day, his experience, on one day's experience, had been a turning point in Joseph's life. Its terrible calamity had transformed him from a petted child to a man. He decided to choose life in Jesus. And this is where he established his faith, on the way to Egypt. And the result of his choice, he did not falter in idolatry. He did not falter when a woman tempted him. And he neither faltered when he was taken to prison because the Lord was with Joseph. And we came back and decided, what is your faith rooted on? Who, rather, is your faith 
rooted on. Choices. Choices. What are you choosing this afternoon? The title of the message this evening, now I see many people recording it, I hope it's not for the quiz only. The title of the message this evening is My Number One Idol. My Number One Idol. What is an idol? Is it American Idol? Or, or, or Philippine Idols? No, no, no. Uh, an idol is not uh, the American, neither the Philippine Idol. But it's defined as an object of adoration. Somebody or something greatly admired or loved, often to the excess. In other words, you are passionate about these things. An idol is an object worshipped as God. Something that is worshipped as God, like a statue or a, carv a carved image. An idol is a forbidden object of worship in monotheistic religion who worship only one God. Now, I know many of us, I was asking one uh, lady, what's your number one idol? Uh, she's a girl right here, and she was like, my number one idol is God. Of course, you know, we usually associate that our number one idol is God, but we forget the first definition, that an object of our adoration, something that we love to an extent of excess, is our idol. I want to ask you a question today. What is your number one idol? How can we define what is the number one idol? Number one thing that you have to define is the time factor. I, I, how many of you, okay, no, no, don't put your hands up, I'll just say it. But many of us might have stayed up watching the World Cup because it was appearing at 4 a.m. in the morning. Maybe some of you watched all the games of Miami in the last season. You know, some of the people in America, they spend, they spend all their time attending every single game that Miami is playing for. So the number one thing is what? You're sleeping. Number one thing is what? Time factor. How much time do you spend on this thing? Number two thing is devotion. Now you see the guy right there? He has 22 tattoos of Miley Cyrus. Do you know who Miley Cyrus is? I know you know who Miley Cyrus is. He has 22 tattoos everywhere in his body. He loves him so much. He loves her so much. Okay, I'm not saying that some of you are putting tattoos, but the devotion is to an extent where you would really even fight for your team. These guys right here are fighting in Russia. They are from different football clubs. This happens a lot. It happens a lot. I remember uh, one time, um, it was just last year. No, no, this year. Yeah, this year. When Manchester United lost, uh, somebody from one country, I will not mention where because it's from Africa and it's not from Tanzania, he committed suicide because the team lost. That's how much devotion they have on the idol. So number one is time factor. Number two is what? Number three is money spent. Whose uh, uh, fans are these? Who do you think? Okay, if you don't know, these are Miley Cyrus fans. I, I can see some people saying that. Can you see they look alike? They, the way they're dressing, they're going right there to her concert, and you know they usually spend a lot of money in the way that they dress. Even if she dresses so prov provocative. You see, people never used to dress like this. But now because their idol, because their fan has done it, they too want to do it. And it's not just one person, it's several people. And they spend a lot of money attending each of the concerts. They spend money. One word to summarize what an idol is, is that they are passionate about their idols. They are passionate about the person in whom they adore. What do you 
give your time, money, and devotion. You know, we can easily say we come to church every Sabbath day. What happens when you leave the church? Then what? What do you then give your time, money, or devotion? Is it your gadgets? You know, you can even enter homes where every one of the family is using their gadgets and they're on their different things. Is it the social media? I remember I met a girl last year and she, ha she had Twitter, she had Facebook, she had Instagram, she had... I was like, what? Like, and then she's checking on all of them at the same time. You know, she is constantly wants to be updated and wants to update their profiles. Are you addicted on these things? Is your devotion shopping? You know, when Friday hits, you want to hit it out to SM and buy some food or buy some clothes or whatever sale when you see sale. And I see a lot of sales in the Philippines. I've never seen so many sales. There's just sale for everything. Sale for end of year, sale for opening of the year, sale for the mid-year, sale for the everything. So people love shopping. Are you devoting your time, money, and devotion in these things. Boyfriend and girlfriend. I know some people who can never be apart. They just want to be with their boyfriend or their girlfriend constantly. Is this becoming your idol outside the church? Spending time and, 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 and going places and, and you even forget your God? Concerts. Some of you might love so many concerts that you are attending concert after concert. Yes, you could be making an idol of a good thing like studying. How many of you just love studying over and over and this has taken primacy over your time, over your money and your adoration? There is nothing wrong with studying, but when it's done to an excess that you forget about God, it has become an idol in your life. How about movies? I know this is the favorite one of people. Men, they love movies. People love movies. Movies after movies after movies. And I'm telling you, there, there could be somebody in this room who could tell me what all these stories are about. Because they've probably watched all the movies. Soap operas. Who's addicted here to soap operas? And they love watching them. They cannot miss a show. They have to rush home and, and watch these things and, 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 and catch up with what is happening. <laughs> wow. So I can tell, huh? I can tell. What is your number one idol? What is your number one idol? What spends all your time? I know a friend who has to open internet every day to check the anime update. Is it anime? It's anime? You see, I don't even know the name. Anime update. Every day, you see some people are even naming. That one is that one. You see that one? They know this anime. Anime, sorry. Okay, let me move. <laughs> Rather than making you guys too excited, I can see so many of you. And how many of you? Okay, you see, I didn't even see any claps for this one. <laughs> okay, no need to clap anymore. I've already said it, it's too late, it's too late. It's too late now. But how many of you that even when the week of prayer, this week of prayer, even when we finished, how many of you would love to just spend a little bit more time? You know, just like how you love your girlfriend or your boyfriend and you like to linger on a bit, like, should we go now? No, 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 there is still one more minute. There is still one more minute. Can we spend a bit longer? How many of you love to do the same with God? Do you love your relationship 
with God. Again, we said these things in the morning. This signifies by the study of the word. It is signified by your prayers. It's signified by your sharing of faith. And it's signified by your worship of God. What is your number one idol? Well, look at the story of Aaron and the Israelites. Let us pray. Dear God, who am I that you are mindful of me, that you hear me when I call? I am but Moses, yes, to be Yosef, a young boy, and I need your help to speak to your people. Some don't understand English so well, and I am speaking too fast. Some understand, but they, they just don't care, and they want to sleep. Some want to understand, but maybe I might be speaking too high for their understanding. In all this, O oh Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit can touch both me and your children, that we can be able to get something out of this lesson. We can understand that your love for us is so immense that we cannot have anything else that would take our time, adoration, or money. Please help us this morning. Help me to learn something from this presentation as well. Help us to make a decision to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The story of Aaron and the Israelites. The memory text for today is found in Joshua, and it's actually the, the theme of our week of prayer and even our song. Joshua speaking to the children of Israelites. He said unto them, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. And if it seems to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of Amorites in, which, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What are you going to decide today? We are going to look at Aaron and the Israelites. You see, in the story of Israelites, it was God who chose the Israelites. God was the one who chose the Israelites. And we see this very clear in the Bible. In the time of Abraham, this is what God told Abraham when he was making a pact, a covenant, a promise with Abraham, he told to him, in the same day, the Lord made a covenant unto Abraham, saying, unto the seed, I have given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river of Euphrates. Who was giving the land? Can I hear everyone? Who was giving the land? It was God. It was not Abraham, but it was God. God was the one who was choosing Israel. And in the life of Jacob, the same thing happened. Jacob had just run away. He had, he had run away and, uh, from home because he had lied to the father. And the brother was angry at him. And now he was running and running. And he went and slept on a rock because it was too dark. And there on a dream, God revealed himself to him. And he told to him, and behold, the Lord God stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. And the land whereon thou liest to thee, thou liest to thee will who? To thee will who? I did not hear it. To thee will who? I. To thee will I give it and to thy seed. Who was giving the land? God or Jacob? God. 
on Abraham's time, we see that God gave the land. In Jacob's time, we also see that God gave the land. And now the children of, of God are in Egypt. We, we, are, we are running down in the timeline of time. We see after, after Abraham, there was Isaac. After Isaac, there was Jacob. After Jacob, there was Joseph. And Joseph called the family to Egypt. And they had grown in a big number. And they had been put into slavery. And now God is looking down upon his children being put into slavery. And what does it say? It says, and God heard the groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel. And God had respect on them. We can understand that who wanted to deliver them? Who? Who wanted to deliver them? God. God, again, is the active participant. He's the one actively participating in delivering the children of Israel. And it did not just remain with words. You know, many of us, humans are just full of words. Even your friends. Your friends tell you, I promise you, I promise you I will return to you this money next week. The next week you go, ah, kuya, uh, what happened to my money? Bayad po. And they're like, ah, I am so sorry. Next week, and then you end up even forgetting. There was somebody who my father sent them to give me $50, and they have never given it to me till today. And I was like, I, I, just, I just left asking. This is humans. Humans just say words, but they don't keep it in action. But this is not our Lord and our God. God, when he says something, he does it. He told them that he will save them, and he confirmed their salvation. We see that God confirmed his choice on them. In the, in Moses now had, been, uh, had run away from Egypt, and, and, and he was flocking or tending the flocks in Midian. And there God came to him in a burning bush, and it said, And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land, and a large, unto a, good, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and all the ites. Who was going to bring them out? I cannot hear it. Who was going to bring them out? God was going to bring them out. And we can see active delivery in the life of the Israelites. We see that Moses now went to speak to the, to the, to the Israelites when they were in slavery still. And he tells them this. And you can still see that it's still God who wants to save them. It said there in Exodus chapter 4, verses 31, I'm so sorry you cannot read the end, but maybe next time we can do that. But he declared to Israel, and the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel, and that he had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. It was the Lord who visited them. It was not Moses, neither was it Aaron. And we see it when Moses went to declare this to Pharaoh. Same thing happened. He says, and afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Who was letting them go? God. It says, he does not say, uh, what, what, what? And Moses went to, to Pharaoh and told him, Thus saith Moses, let my people go. He says, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Israel was saved. You know the ten plagues that happened in Egypt. And they were brought out of the slavery. And now they were, on the, they, they were outside. The first thing that Moses tells to them, the first thing after their salvation, he says this, And Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you came out 
from Egypt out of the house of bondage, for by the strength of the hand of who? Lord brought you out from this place. It was God who had delivered the children of Israelites. It was God who had chosen them, and even in the book of Exodus, we know the Ten Commandments very well. The preamble, the preamble means this is the important point. This is what the Ten Commandments were based upon. This statement, it says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. That was the most important point, that they should keep the commandments. He said, I am the one who brought you out. It was not Moses. It was no one else. Give me your time. Give me your money. Give me your devotion. Not that he wanted the money from us, but he wanted a grateful response from children who love him back, who adore him. What did Israel choose? What was Israel's choice. We find this decision in Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32. What happened is that Israel wanted other gods. It says in verses 1, and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mount, the people gathered themselves unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of Egypt, we wot not what, ha what is become of him. Two points. Two points. Point number one. Moses delayed to come down from the mountain. What happens when the week begins? When there is no Sabbath? What happens when there is no longer worship services in your house? As I've said before, what happens when nobody is telling you, please read your Bible? Do you turn to your idols? When you're home alone, when nobody is watching you, is it now the time for your movies? Is it now the time for your anime? Is it now the time for other things apart from religion? Do you now put your Bible away because ah, this God is only for school? Or is your God a God of every time? Even when he's not answering your prayers, he is still your God? Second point. Notice what they said. We have just discovered who delivered the people out of Egypt. Who delivered the people? Everyone, who delivered the people? But what do they say? It says, Moses, the man that brought us up out of Egypt. They now turned that this religion thing it was because of Moses. After all that God had done for them, this is the response? Maybe for you, we would say, you know what? My dad is no longer here anymore, so I don't have to keep the Sabbath day holy. Maybe we'll say, I don't go to AUP Academy anymore, so I don't have to attend any worship services. I do not have friends who tell me to worship on Sabbath day, so I don't really have to go to church because it was only because of them that I was going. What is your number one idol? And even worse, Aaron subsided 
to the pressure. It says in verses 2, And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in your ears of your wives, of your sons, of your daughters, and bring them to me. And notice this, and it says, And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. All the people. It was not just some. It was all the people. Everyone who had been saved. Well, it was not exactly that they all worshipped, but those who had the earrings, those who had these idols, and, and they came together and said, here it is, make us an idol. Have you noticed how it's so easy, it's so easy to get people together to watch a movie or to go to a cinema. Have you noticed? And it's so easy to tell, hey guys, let's go out and eat in Paseo. Like, yeah, I want to come, I want to come, I want to come. But when you say, hey guys, let's go early for church. Uh, really? Nobody wants to go anymore. But when we are doing, hey, let's go watch anime, or let's go shopping, or let's go watch this movie, we are all excited. Amen, amen. They fashioned it beautifully. It says there, and he, Aaron, received them at their hands and fashioned it with a graving tool and made it a molten calf. You know, even when we are dealing with things that are not of God, we actually do them more beautifully. Have you noticed that? Just look at the way they create movies these days. Wow. Top of the class. And then look at how we create Christian movies. It's so cheap, you know. We don't have any money. We don't have any money to create uh, these movies. We, we just create it cheap, but for them, they have animation. They have graphic designs. They have all this good stuff. Idols are always good. Never bad. They always seem good. Seem good. And this is what they did. They shaped it, and it became this beautiful molten calf. And notice what they really did. They now made it a guard to them. It says there at the end that, and they said, the last part, these be thy gods, O Israel. Notice the last part. Which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Okay, there were some of them who were quite uncomfortable. They were a bit half-half. Hey, hey, guys, we're still Seventh-day Adventists. We, we still worship on Sabbath day. We can't be doing this. We can't, we can't be adoring so much going to movies. We can't be watching so much television. We can't be playing games too much. We can't be going shopping. So what are we going to do? We are going to share the seat with God. Have you noticed this? That on Sabbath day, okay, if it's Sabbath day, we will worship. But when it comes to Sabbath afternoon or evening, we'll go back to our idols. We'll go back to our movies. We'll go back to our series which we're not tired of. It says there in that verse, And Aaron saw it. He and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is the feast of the Lord. You know, the feast of the Lord, it was only for the Lord God. But here, they have said that they make an idol, and then they say, you know what? We are going to also worship God. So you say, ah, you know what, it's okay, I am, I am, I am watching these movies, it's okay, I am, I am adoring these basketball fans and everything, it's okay, I'm listening to the wrong music, but at least I am still going to church. You think you're choosing life. We think we are choosing life. What happened on the next day is they shared a seat with God. Notice how many verbs are there. And what did I tell you about sin? Sin always happens without what? Thinking. It happens too fast. It says, and they what? 
rose up early in the morrow, and they what? Okay, whoever is answering, offered, burnt offering, and they what? Brought peace offering, and the people what? Sat down to, and to, and, ro and what? Rose up to what? So many activities, right? Can you do all this? Bring offering, bring peace offering. They bring and then they, 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 they what? I forgot already. Uh, they, they sat, they eat, they drink, they rose, and they played. And look how terrible it got. Actually, it says in verses 25 of chapter 32 that, and when Moses saw the people were what? The people became even naked. You know, you might say, what? How can that happen? That could not have happened. Now, how do you wonder when two guys end up, a guy and a girl end up in the morning and they're naked? What happened there as well? Things happen too fast. It's the same thing. These guys, they wanted to share an idol. They wanted to share God as an idol. And what was the result? Result number one. Moses was so angry. Moses was so angry, and it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh to the camp, he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot. He cast the table out of his hand and break them beneath the mount. The tables that God had created, he broke them off. It's the covenant. We just agreed that we're going to worship God. We've just attended the week of prayer just the last week academy but next week we are all watch, watching the same movies again we are all doing the same thing what is going on this is why you have to choose today at the end of it Moses presented Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said who is in the Lord's side, let him come to me. He gave them a choice again. He told them, who wants to be with the Lord's side? And some people had already had too much fun with the idols. Maybe they were already having sex. You know, it was reverie. Actually, they were saying they were just doing all kinds of things there. They were enjoying themselves, as we call it today. And... They said, ah, you know what, God, uh, going to read the Bible, ah, uh, nah, I think I'd rather stay on this side. I think I'd rather enjoy my life a bit. Actually, I, I saw another girl running around. I need to, first of all, get to know her a bit more before I choose God. They thought they were choosing life. And the result of it was death. It says, and said, and he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out of the gate, to the gate, throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. 3,000 people were killed that day. What is your number one idol? Are you sharing your seat of adoration, your seat of time, your seat of money with something else apart from God? If God comes right now, will you be found faithful? You know, Joshua Nunn, his name is Joshua Nunn. Joshua Nunn was a young man who became a right hand to Moses. He was actually with Moses up on the top of the mountain. He was up with Moses, helping him hold up his hands. He was there when he went, 
he went to Canaan to search the land and he came back saying that we can conquer. He was a young boy at that time, but now he started growing up. He had chosen his foundation in the Lord. He had decided that my number one adoration, my number one time, and my number one person that I will give my all is my God. And he is the one who took over. And so, at the end of his life, Joshua said, at the end of the life of Joshua, he reminded the children of Israel, Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers, maybe for you today I'll say which your friends, or even which you or me are serving. On the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom will you serve, whether the gods of your father that they served on the other side of the flood or the gods of Amorites in the land that you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What be your decision this afternoon? As you look around, sorry, I forgot to read the other part. Yes, this is the last part. As you look around, everybody has their own little adoration. There is nothing wrong, by the way, with using your computer. There is nothing wrong with studying. There is nothing wrong with having a boyfriend at the right time or a girlfriend. But there is something wrong when they become your adoration and your devotion and you spend your money even more than you spend with God. If you tell me that you spend more time with God, amen. Choose you this day. You see, God gave you life. God gave you life. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whomsoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What are you going to choose? He chose you. He saved you. What will you choose today? As I am coming to a close, I told you I will make an appeal. If there is somebody today who would like to say, Lord, I want to really declare it, not only in my heart as I have been doing all week, but I want to publicly declare it now in PIC, that I choose God. I want to choose God. Yes, I know I'm struggling with watching movies or I'm struggling with, 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 with my boyfriend or I'm struggling with studying too much or I'm start struggling with bad words, but I choose today my God and I ask him to help me. That's the first decision. If you would like to publicly, this is a high decision. Don't come if you're not sure and don't come if you're joking as the Lord is convicting you. Those who would like to say that. And further, if there is somebody who would like to say, I would like to have Bible studies and really affirm this decision in God, please also come up. If there is somebody who would like to say, I would like to be baptized as soon as possible to really affirm my decision in God, I would like to choose life today, I would like to also invite you to come up as Rikla is singing the song.
if there's anyone who would like to come up making that decision today to choose life make it on your own thank you Just stand here with me. Amen. Please think. Think. Can we have quiet? Can we have silence in the house of God? Just come, just come. Just come, no problem. Please. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming. Please, let's keep quiet. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Guys, I commend you for coming up, and I will be praying for you. Yesterday I fasted for you guys, and I fasted for all of you too. And this is the time where we make a decision for Christ. Rikla, thank you for that song. Lord, I want to know you more. I pray that you can make this solid decision. And as I pray with you right now, I ask that you guys can also pray with me. We will kneel down together here at the front and pray. And after that, please, as you're going down, pick up a card that you would return to Pastor Castillo. There is cards there and you can tick a decision whether I desire to be ready for Christ's return. I would like to rededicate my life to God. I would like to have Bible study or I would like to be baptized soon. It is okay if you have no decision, there is no problem. You are dedicating your life to God today. Guys, let us just come closer. Let's come closer and kneel down as we pray. Let's kneel down together. Let us pray. Our dear kind and heavenly Father, your children have been affirming the decision of life throughout this week. And dear Lord, they confidently came up to the front of the stage this afternoon. Dear Lord, they are making a decision to choose life. And they are standing on, they are kneeling in fact, on holy ground, acknowledging that Lord, we want to be in your presence. I pray for them. Just like I need these prayers, oh Lord, I pray that you keep them. There is something in their heart that is still waging war with the devil. Please help them overcome. 
whatever idol it may be, just like I also have some idols which I need to give up, Lord, help them overcome. Maybe it may be social media, it may be girlfriend, boyfriends, movies, whatever, dear Lord, it could be. It may be even friends or their studies. Dear Lord, it may even be their parents. May they choose you today. Oh Lord, the spirit of prophecy says that heaven rejoices when one soul decides for you, O oh Lord. And I'm sure the heaven is dancing, is clapping their hands, and they're rejoicing for these souls who really want to know you more. Keep them safe. Protect them and help them as they even go down to make these decisions wisely. As they tick the paper in the decision box, O oh Lord, they, may they do it through the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. May they spend some time praying first. I pray for the remaining congregation. Bless them and keep them. There are some who are still in the valley of decision deciding whether they should really declare to the entire AUP Academy that I am a child, I am a daughter of God, and I want to choose life today. Help them. Please, dear Lord, keep us safe. Until tomorrow, blessed be the name of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Please, as you're going down, proceed. Uh, guys, can you line up here? And then as you go down, go down this side, this side. Just come here. Just go here. Yes.